some surprising news today. It was announced today that Sum 41 will be disbanding following the release of their upcoming and 9 studio record, which will be their last. The band will however be touring to support the record and it will be their farewell tour. The band would release a statement on social media that read, Being in Sum 41 since 1996 brought us some of the best moments of our lives. We are forever grateful to our fans, both old and new, who have supported us in every way. It's hard to articulate the love and respect we have for all of you, and we wanted you to hear this from us first. Sum 41 will be disbanding. We will still be finishing all of our current tour dates this year, and we're looking forward to releasing our final album, along with a final worldwide headlining tour to celebrate. Details will be announced as soon as we have them. Last August, it was reported that frontman Derek Wibley has sold his publishing to an investment firm, and it was earlier in the year he also put some of his instruments up for sale. Wibley would tell Rolling Stone last year that the band's final record would be a double album, with half of the record seeing them returning to their pop-punk roots. It was recently announced the band will be supporting The Offspring on their summer 2023 tour, which goes from early August to early September. The band is also scheduled to play some European festivals next month. Their own farewell tour, if I had to guess, would probably kick off sometime in September and then run until the end of the year. The Canadian band would be formed in 1996 and hail from Ajax, Ontario. They would burst onto the mainstream in the early 2000s thanks to the success of their albums All Killer No Filler, their follow-up Does This Look Infected, and 2004's Chuck. The band would continue to release albums in the subsequent years and undergo lineup changes. If you guys missed it, I recently did a video on the band's 2004 trip to the Democratic Republic of Congo. Congo at the time was going through a nearly decade-long civil war that would kill millions and displace many more. The band was in the country to shed a light on a forgotten conflict and interview those who had been exploited and victimized by warring groups. They soon enough found themselves in the crossfire between two warring parties when their hotel would be struck by bullets and mortars. The link to that video is down below. As for today's news, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and we'll see you again on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.